Yeah. 
God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, our summit power, our God, our God, for your presence, Lord God, this morning, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are our Abba Father, our great God. Panginoon, nagpapasalamat kami, Panginoon, because in you, Lord God, we could find security, Lord. We could find love, Lord. We could find peace, Lord. Lord, thank you for loving us, Lord God. Thank you for dying on the cross for all of us, Lord, for saving us, Lord, for redeeming us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That in you, Lord God, we can find strength, Lord. Lord, we ask, Father, that you continue to, to bless our hearts, Lord, even mold us, Lord. So we continue to honor you. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you that your love never ends. Never runs dry, Lord. 
Lord, we declare that you are bigger than what we're experiencing right now. You are b- bigger than our vision. You are bigger, Lord God, more than what we can think or imagine. Because we are serving a big God. We're serving a, a God who cares, who loves us so much, who could even, even do things beyond, beyond our strength, beyond our ability, because He is God. Lord, thank you so much, God, for 15 years of your faithfulness here in Zamboanga. You are faithful then, and you are faithful surely now, and you will be faithful forever. Lord, we just want to honor you today and for the rest of our lives. We just want to even give the best honor you deserve this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You will just give God a standing ovation for this two minutes. Come on, continue from offering for two minutes. Don't stop. Give it for the King of Kings. Come on, God deserve it. God deserve more. Amen to that. I believe that God deserves every worship. All right, so again, uh, keep standing uh, uh, for two minutes. I want all of us to please move around. Okay, lang ba yan? I meet your friends today. Okay, greet everyone. A happy anniversary. Yeah. Right, this is our 15-year anniversary, so take time to greet everyone. Thank you so much. All right, good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Oh, Welcome my to Victory. Well. We're good here talk. to honor God and make disciples, and it's our 15 years anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Hey, grab it. Pwede mo natin palapakan ulit si Lord for the yeah, 15 thank years you, Lord. of His faithfulness and goodness. All right. Nakatuwa lang. Um, if you're sitting beside an empty chair, can you please raise your hand? Oh. Pag may if you're sitting beside pa. an empty chair, may bakante so pa sa tabi nyo. See, oh, yun, don't sa... Uh, Right okay, tayo. Meron dito. Uh, meron pa dito mga available chairs there. May side. Oh, keep please uh, continue to uh, taas natin yung kamay natin para makita nila na may bakante pa sa tabi nyo. Okay, yun. Meron pa po tayo dito sa side. Uh, yes, yun. All right. Good morning. Um, we're so glad that uh, we're, all of us are here this morning. Uh, the, this first service sobrang powerful yung word, and uh, I believe na God will gonna encourage us today. Uh, in our second service, for those who do not know, your first service natin was live sa Sky Cable and Mindanao Cable and you stream natin, no, nation, worldwide actually. And itong second service is live, you stream. Alright, so, uh, okay, ma-conscious. <laughs> anyway, we just want to tell you, if you have kids, we have kids' shirts, the second floor, Crystal, yeah, Ballroom. Crystal Ballroom. They have ventriloquist uh, show doon, yeah. uh, some of the mascot there, so, Father TJ. Ayun, no? So, uh, please do uh, encourage yung mga anak nyo po, especially mga bata po, to be there. Okay, sa pa natin, Kids Church. Okay? So, gusto lang itanong, ha? if you are with us, this is our 15 year anniversary, if you are with us for the last 15 years, can you please raise your hand? I, I, I see familiar faces. Meron ba dito? You were ah. with us. Ayun, natinili. Ayun, wow. Ayan. Last, oh, last 15 years. If you are with <laughs> us, with the church, wow, Ate Joy. Kasi <laughs> nasanda si Nujay. Wow. Hello po, Mamemi. Now, if you are with us for the last 10 years, you've 10 joined years. Victory for the last 10 years, can you please raise your head? Oh, Steve. Good, Steve. Hi, hello. 
If you're with us uh, for the last five years, five years kayo. man, ayun. Five years. Five years. Ayun, may nag wow, na natin ayun. sila. Uh, last four years ago. Four years ago. Four years now. All right, Mark. Okay, three years ago. Wow, ang dami. Palapan naman natin sila. No? Two years ago. Meron mo ditong two, two years, years ago? <laughs> Wow. Eh, meron, 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 wow. ayun. And last year, 2012, 12, our 14th year anniversary. Ayun. And just this year, meron ba dito? You just visited Victory and you were with us uh, for the last few months. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're so happy and so thankful to God that uh, God uh, uh, even gave us uh, an opportunity to invest into your lives. And we're here to honor God and make disciples. And right. That's our, our task and that's our, our banner of high. We raise the banner of Christ to honor Him and to make disciples. So, Pastor TJ? Okay, before we uh, return our God's size and offering this morning, allow me to share this passage in Psalm 107 verse 1. It says here, Give thanks to the Lord for His good, His faithful love endures forever. Now, this Psalms remind us that the best sacrifice we can offer to God is a faithful and obedient life. Now, as we return God's size and offering this morning, let's continue to obey His word and His will. Let's continue to trust and believe that God will supply all our needs. Let's continue to uh, be in faith. Okay, sa inyong upuan po, meron tayong uh, envelope dyan where you could put God's says, or please don't forget to put or to write down your prayer request. We love to stand with you in prayer and to believe God for breakthroughs sa mga life nyo po. Okay? Alright, before we pray, I just want to give you some updates uh, for the past few days and weeks uh, because of the crisis. Uh, God gave us an opportunity to uh, do some outreaches. Uh, I believe God no, has opened the way and doors for all of us. And I believe, uh, I just want to honor some people, yung mga volunteers dito, you, who were part of those uh, uh, volunteer acts na meron tayo for the past few days and weeks. And we've done several uh, outreaches, uh, effort to rebuild some buwanga, yung mga love bags natin, no, ginawa ng Kids Church yun, and spearheaded by, by Sandra Santos. So, palakpan naman natin yung Kids Church for doing that. And also, yung meron tayong ginawang uh, mitienda, uh, to rebuild family, ang ginawa natin dyan is we gave uh, a grocery package, no, not for them to consume, but for them to start a business, a small sari-sari store. And uh, we will continually uh, monitor them and asking them how we can be of help sa kanila in, in starting that business. And of course, we ginawa rin natin yung ang panday, which means rebuilding lives. No? Na nag-distribute tayo ng mga tools uh, sa mga volunteers natin na sa iba conscience center ng mga carpenters. Carpintero. So we have a video for that. Uh, we want to show you a video to encourage everyone. Okay? Uh, Sige, let's, let's pray muna. Let's pray muna. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness, Lord. I pray that uh, as we continue to honor you and make disciples, Lord, I pray that we will continue to be obedient to your word and to your will, Lord. Thank you for all the times of this church. Lord, we also believe, Lord God, for those people who are believing for breakthroughs in their finance, Lord. Thank you that you are faithful, Lord God, to yes. supply all our needs. We bless you and we honor you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, we want to thank everybody who's, uh, who's a part of this, really uh, prayed for and uh, donated and volunteered, especially sa mga hindi lang relief but also rebuilding efforts. Alam ko maraming relief uh, efforts going on right now, but uh, part of what we're doing is we just really want to help uh, rebuild lives, yung mga sa students, uh, yung mga nag-volunteer in helping build the community kitchen in uh, our uh, one of our evacuation centers. So, nangihiram pa ng mga tools. So, binigyan namin yung mga yung mga fathers ng ano ng uh, carpentry tools. Okay, yung tawag natin Panday Project headed by the Punong Panday, Pastor Romel Insular. And um, of course, uh, meron ding uh, members from our church na nasunugan ng bahay, nasunugan ng sari-sari store. Uh, so, we wanted to help them. And uh, meron lang muna tayong dalawang families na natulungan with the Mitya and the project. Parang a sort of a a startup lang capital for their sari sari store um, and I also had the chance to pray for them uh, in fact yung family ni Roll nandito uh, the family of Roll is here can you please stand okay uh, okay there, uh, si Roll is also part of our church praying family joined us today si Cherish din yata at saka yung family niya I don't know if uh, Cherish and the family are here uh, dalawang relatives ni uh, Cherish na sunugan ng bahay no? so they're now staying with her so um uh, let's continue to pray that God will rebuild Zamboanga. Okay, we've talked about that during our series, Aftermath. And, and we're looking forward not just to going back to the way things were before, but we're looking forward to a better Zamboanga and a better uh, people and for God's plan to really take place in this city. He is uh, uh, the builder and the watchman over this city. Amen. So. Anyways, uh, if you still want to help and participate, you're very much welcome. Again, thank you sa lahat ng mga nag-donate, nag-pray, ng mga nag-volunteer. Uh, there will be other efforts. Alam ko yung mga iba yata, uh, umuwi na rin. Okay, sa, uh, may mga ibang uh, barangays na nag-open up na uli. But there were still some people in the evacuation centers. And as long as there's work to be done, okay, we want to be there and we want to be ready to share the love of God for them and uh, hopefully the message of God as well. All right? uh, again, uh, happy 15th anniversary to us in uh, 15 years of honoring God and making disciples in Sambuanga City. And we're so blessed to have with us uh, today Pastor Jun Escazar. Uh, for those of you who don't know, si Pastor Jun po yung pastor ko before I went to Sambuanga. And if you ever become a member of the church that he's pastoring, hindi pwedeng hindi ka lalabas either to go on a mission trip or to plant a church. Because uh, uh, Pastor Jun is our missions director. He's our uh, Asia missions director. Part siya ng national leadership team and international leadership team. He has a doctorate in missions. And, and not only that, he's our church planting guru. Sa lahat po ng mga pastors who go through school, will have to pass through his class. Okay, so uh, I think mga... Sudyante niya from Sambuanga, mukhang mga excellent student naman. <laughs> okay, but uh, si Pastor Jun is, uh, is really uh, uh, an example that we look up to as a husband, a husband to uh, Miss Gigi, of course, uh, from Sambuanga. Okay, so kaya malapit po yung Sambuanga sa kanya. A former Miss Gigi Lim. And uh, he's a father of two, and not only that, he's a pastor of pastors. And uh, we really look up to him. We really admire his leadership. He always inspires us and encourages us to do greater things for God. I know there are people who are very busy, but I think there is no one as busy as him, especially for the Lord. So uh, he's going to give us some updates. So we had a wonderful time, this 8.30 a.m. service. So without further ado, can we give Pastor June a very warm Sambuanga welcome. Gracias, Pastor Richie. Buenos dias, everybody. I'm uh, I'm always thrilled to visit this beautiful city because this is the city my wife. Uh, this is her birthplace, uh, former Gigi Lim, and uh, of course, uh, even though I've known uh, Pastor Richie for many years, we pastored the church, we uh, served, we planted the church in Taft Avenue. We, it's now called Victory Malate. Our church was in a UP Little Theater. We've outgrown it so many times. We've had so many. We've grown there so much. Pastor Richie, uh, uh, we've worked together, but uh, my secret ambition was to raise him up to maybe do everything that I do. But when I found out that he has a heart for Zamboanga, I cannot say no because we want to send only the best here in Zamboanga City. So uh, I give the Lord a big hand for that. And uh, Pastor Richie is a, a great leader. And uh, I just, uh, in many ways, I, I know that when we come together, very few people I would open up 
my heart, my perspectives, and he's become a great bouncing board uh, when we were together, and I'm just really thrilled. God has blessed him, of course, uh, later on with a beautiful wife, Raya. Uh, she was here this morning, also from UP. They're both from UP. Uh, and uh, God has uh, blessed you guys with really two wonderful people. And they have a heart for Zamboanga long term. And uh, I believe that what we've seen here in the last 15 years is just a foretaste of many more great things God will do. And I really admire uh, Pastor Richie's commitment and love for this city, so much so that he's now like a local, he speaks the local language. I've been married to Zamboanguenya for 20, 25 years next year and still don't know how to speak Zamboanguenya. Well, I, I, I go all over the nations. Uh, I just arrived uh, yesterday from Indonesia and I've stayed only for bare, barely really a day. Uh, the week before that, I also have barely 24 hours in Manila because I also came from North Korea for the very first time. Uh, in a year, there are only 500 uh, people that goes in there, uh, there, and I'm one of them this year. And uh, even though every, it was, it's very difficult to uh, work there because you have 24-hour uh, people watching you, security, uh, no iPad, no iPhone. I mean, that was the greatest miracle more than going there is that I survived without any gadgets. <laughs> Uh, we were only allowed to bring our cameras, but for every photo you shoot, you have to ask permission. But God, despite the difficulty there, God has opened doors for us. I think uh, this nation is ripe. We can place people there inside, uh, not just outside or in the border, but really inside deep there in, uh, in North Korea. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, so uh, let me just, uh, uh, are we good here? This is the apostolic team that extends their greetings. Uh, these are the uh, uh, national leadership team, which I'm a part of. And basically, that's, by the way, that's my wife there. Uh, there, right there. Okay, that's me beside. And uh, they, these are the people that oversee our entire work, not only in the Philippines, but all the churches that uh, we have started all over the world. And uh, the only person that's not there is Pastor Steve Merle and his wife, Deborah, and the wife of Pastor Paolo, who is right there in the middle. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this picture. We've never shown this before, but this is the people that oversee all of our work all over the Philippines, and they just wanted to share their love to you. And again, during the period of your crisis, we want you to know we are standing with you. We prayed for you. We, uh, we were coming together and just see, evaluating assessing and see what could be done that was the least that we could do but again our hearts with you our heart went out for what was happening here but again all things work together for good amen god has a purpose and uh this is my own family right there that's uh my wife uh Gigi, we've been married now next year will be 25 years of marriage by the grace of god uh you know when when jesus is the center of your marriage we are in love. We, I, we could honestly say that we are more in love with each other 24 years later than the day we walked down the aisle. God bless us with two wonderful children. Uh, Rachel is uh, 18 years old and my son is 16. Uh, I look up to him now because he's two inches taller than me. I guess the younger generation is a lot taller than <laughs> their moms and dads today. But this is my family who also extend their love to you and their greeting. They wish they could come, but... This was such a short trip. Uh, I was supposed to just come in this morning and fly out this afternoon, but Cebu Pacific canceled. Uh, I don't know. I got this note, whatever that meant, uh, majeure, whatever that is, force majeure. <laughs> uh, maybe that's a French word, but they said they canceled it based on that, so I leave tomorrow. Let me just, uh, because of my role, I serve in the apostolic team. I had the privilege of seeing the whole entire ministry and by the way, I bear, uh, I bear employee number 0001. So I have been here from the very beginning. I'm the first full-time staff, the first pastor. So I had the privilege of perspective, be seeing how God's faithfulness has blessed us all through these years. And so every time I come and visit, maybe some pastors don't do this, but I want to give you an update because we are part of one big spiritual family in the Philippines. So let me give you, uh, starting with Metro Manila update, we're 29 years this year, next year we will celebrate a big bang celebration for 30 years. 
although we were quite skeptical if there is even any place that could accommodate us because uh, right now our sheer number is just way beyond any meeting place in Metro Manila unless it's an open uh, meeting. 29 years, we are in 15 locations, 111 weekend services. So here we have, we have generally three, but because of our renovation, we have two. Imagine 111 services to choose from. In Metro Manila, we are, uh, are 72,000 three months ago. There's no telling how many we are today. It's over 6,000 small group leaders. For the Philippines, I'm so uh, happy to tell you that uh, we, are, we have 62 churches outside Metro Manila. So 62 churches. The latest two ones is uh, we've just launched our church in one of the most difficult places in the Philippines. It's called Tagaytay City. So we have now a church there. It's been running one month old. And the other one is launching today in Butuan City. So praise God for that. And can we give the Lord a big hand for that? And so plus our 15 Metro Manila location, that brings a total of 77 all over the Philippines. And uh, we have outside the Philippines, this is just for the Philippines, that's about roughly 30,000. 174 services going on all over the country, excluding Metro Manila. And uh, about what is exciting is at the bottom, we have 12 ongoing church plans. That included the two that I mentioned to you earlier. There is one more we really need to reach. That's probably the most challenging, most difficult place in the whole country. That would be Boracay. One day we will have a church there also. So <laughs> pray with us. Uh, uh, also, just for Asia update, Again, this is really the world I serve. I am the Asia Director for Missions. And I travel extensively. Actually, I travel about three countries a month. So just imagine how challenging that could be. Uh, just my passport only is good for a year because there's no more place to stamp. It's full. So I change my passport every year. Just overseeing churches all over the world. Let me just, uh, let me just give you an update. I don't know how aware you are of this information, but... There are only 54 countries in all of Asia. That includes Middle East, that includes Central Asia. But these 54 countries represent 60% of the world's entire population. The largest region of the world is our region in Asia. And by the grace of God, out of 54, we are in 33, and we have basically 21 to go. Come on, give the Lord a hand for that. Our recent church plant is Timor Leste. In fact, I will be there next week to officially launch our church. Okay? In other words, that's the first time we go absolutely public. The church has been fully launched. So I'll go back to Timor Leste, go, go back to Indonesia, then Timor Leste. We launched our Midan church uh, recently, our Bahrain church. I was uh, the first one to actually uh, convene our people there and launch it officially. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the last eight months, I was there three times to launch our church in Jeddah, in al Kubar, and in Riyadh. I'm telling you this just in case you have relatives or members of our church that may be there that doesn't know that they can connect. And also, we are now on a third wave of church plant in Israel. And also, we fully launched our church in Brunei. Our new target is Pakistan. I was just there in April. And already we sent this week a team of five member team, church planting team, seasoned, but very, very young, who have just landed in Pakistan to f start our church plant there. Sri Lanka will start next month in November. Oman started uh, this September, uh, last month. Then Bhutan, Tibet, Egypt, September, uh, Tibet, September 13, our church planting team arrived there, very seasoned. Young missionaries are there. Egypt, Kazakhstan, and of course we are now starting to look into North Korea. So for the 21 remaining nations, here's what we've done. We launched what we call the 2020 Initiative. This initiative basically tells us that if we simply target three countries a year, by 2020, because there are 21, we would have reached every single country, or at least established presence in all the countries in all of Asia, including all Middle East, including Central Asia. This is a good thing. Because if any one of you would be assigned to work there or a relative, then at least they have a church to go to. Amen? Praise God. So I shared that to you too in case the Lord may be doing a target in your heart and saying, 
I want you to be a part of this. Some of you, I believe the Lord will challenge you to pray. The Lord will challenge some of you to give. Some of you, the Lord will challenge to partner in this work. And some, the Lord will set you apart to even go here. Either to work uh, in these places to help our church plant or to work in a church planting team. Now, let me just quickly give you an, a building update. This is our Manila headquarters. We have 15 locations. This is one of them. Right now, this is what the building looks like, but we're building this second part of the building. That is non-existent, but it's been uh, going on for six months now. The hole has been dug. I think two layers of basement is now being formed. So this, we really want you to stand with us. This requires a lot of money. We are, we have, by the way, if, if you are not aware, we have no funding coming from anywhere else. Philippines is funding the world, okay? We are the ones giving so much money, whether that's to North America. We are not receiving money from there. We are the ones giving money there. Okay? And that is why God is blessing our... I'll explain to you in a moment. Because we have become a sowing nation. You know, this supposedly third world country that before just received blessing and help is now rising up to start becoming a sowing nation and blessing the rest of the world. Amen? Kaya pag pinagpala ni Lord ang ekonomiya ng bansa natin, hindi dahil sa magaling ang mga ekonomista natin, but there is something much more powerful in the Spirit, and that is because we have put into effect our sh shifting our role from, from being a field to now becoming a sower, and this is what breaks the spirit of poverty in this nation. Because for so long, we always have the mentality of give me, give me, bless me, bless me, and that's okay when you are new, but when... When God starts to bless you and we have to become responsible, amen, and start to be a blessing to the world, taking seriously the mandate of Jesus to go make disciples of every nation. So these are some of the other perspectives of the building. Meron po itong dalawang uh, lower level, two level parking below has 320 car parks. Because in, in Fort Bonifacio, it's very, very challenging. The parking space is quite challenging. These are some of the other perspectives of the building. So please continue to pray for this. This is the picture while it looks inside. Uh, here's another perspective. This is the rooftop where we have prayer chapels going on and also even could be used for a multi-purpose like wedding uh, sometimes. So if you want to get married in this place, you can once this building is finished. Okay. Now, for the word today, what the Lord has put in my heart is has sought the Lord again. There's many, many things to share. I called Pastor Ricci basically just to tell him uh, Pastor Ricci, I wanted to, uh, uh, is it okay if this is what the Lord has put in my heart? He said that is, you know, he basically just confirmed that that is right on to where uh, they've been sensing the Lord. And what I want to talk to you about today is the third E on the banner. I didn't even know we have these banners. I want to talk to you about this very powerful word called empowering. I really believe this is the word of the, word, prophetic word of the Lord for us in this season of time. The typical church, as you may see even before, always has what we would call a man of God syndrome. It's, everything is centered around the man of God. He is the most anointed one. Everybody wants to, uh, to go to him, to be prayed over and all of that. But I believe those days are over. What God, wants, what, what God is showcasing today is not individuals, but his entire church, which is really the body of Christ. So the word empowerment is very, very powerful. It takes a very secure leader, it takes a very healthy church to empower and to trust people. Now we have, we have here not only Pastor Richie, we have Pastor Omel, we have Pastor Jerry, we have many, many pastors that are just as capable, even if Pastor Richie I'm sure will be gone for months, this church will continue to move on because this church is not built around Pastor Ricci. Amen? This built is around the person of Jesus Christ and is very empowering to different kinds of people. Just watching that video moves my heart so amazingly as I begin to see people volunteering, serving. That is what we desire to see our church. That the whole church is being raised up by God and every single member is being used mightily of God to be a blessing. Touching lives touching their neighbors. So the theme I wanted to speak through this morning is getting stronger through empowerment. The spirit of what I wanted to share with you is empowering 
every believer to make disciples. You have heard this countless times, but let me break it down to you even in much more simpler terms. I really believe with all my heart that this is God's heart for every Christian. Jesus expects all of His disciples to disciple other people as well. Now for many of you, because of our culture, just to come to church is, is already something. It, 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 just to have that expression that we could be in the presence of God, to worship God, to, to, to be able to commune with God is something that's great. But I'll tell you one thing. There is nothing more fulfilling. There is no greater legacy in this life than being able to touch somebody's life. In fact, the concept of legacy has nothing to do with what we accomplish in this life. So many of us here are pursuing excellence and great achievements in our lifetime. But I wanted to remind you, while that is a great pursuit, legacy is not about what you accomplish in this life. It's about the outcome of the people that you influence and touch for God beginning with your own family. Legacy is what your children will become for God. You know, if we miss that, here we are trying to achieve, become great achievers. Sometimes we think it's about getting medals and awards and recognition, sometimes to the, at the expense of our very own children. In fact, prosperity has nothing to do with just how much money you have in the bank or how much money you have in your investments. Prosperity begins in the fruit of your womb. Real prosperity are your children. You translate that in the spiritual realm. Real prosperity are the people that you have touched for God. Amen? Please, I want you to pursue excellence and greatness and success in this life. But I want to remind you that in doing so, impact the lives of people around you. Because that is really the spirit of empowering. It's being able to impact and influence the lives of the people around you. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 says, His intent, God's intent, was that now, not later, not in the future, but now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God, the wisdom, the multifaceted wisdom of God, the brilliance of God's strategy and wisdom, should be made known to rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. What is this verse saying? What this verse is telling us is that God wants to display His church before the world. He wants to showcase you to your relatives, to your friends, to your families, what a real Christian really ought to be. That's why the Bible wanted us to become witnesses, to show to people what God has done in our lives. God wants us to become ambassadors of reconciliation. Reconciling people to God. Reconciling people to one another. That is our goal. This world is so divided. This world is so... Uh, there's just so much animosity and indifference. Our goal is to become a bridge builder. To bring healing. To bring restoration. I hope in our families we become catalysts for, for relation building. Amen? People that are, we don't take sides, we, we stand with them because we are for unity. We are called by God to be salt and light. The Bible clearly says what good is salt if it loses its saltiness. We are called to influence. We are called to make an impact as Christian believers. In Ephesians chapter 4, it tells us why God even gave us pastors, evangelists, teachers in the church. Why did God give us spiritual leaders? Not so they could do the job for you, not so they could grandstand and do all the religious and spiritual work, but I want us to see why God gave us leaders. Verse 11, it says, It was He, God, it was God who gave us some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. What is the purpose? Why did God give these gifts to the church? Verse 12, let's all read the verse 12 together. Ready, go. To prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up. Why did God give us these gifts? To prepare God's people. Who are God's people? That's all of you. Our job is to prepare you to do the works of ministry. So that, what? So that the Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God, becoming mature, 
attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That is the goal. Now, let me give you another version, in a, a contemporary English version of the same verse. It says, Christ chose some of us to be apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers, verse 12, so that His people would learn to serve. Would learn to serve and His body would grow strong. How many of you want to be strong spiritually? You know what the key is? Serving. Not just receiving. Not just spectating. There are seasons in our lives where we have to sit down and we need to be mentored and we need to learn. But as we mature, we take responsibilities. Guys, this is not just the job of pastors like us. In fact, our job description is we equip people in the church to do exactly the work of ministry. Not us doing ministry because we are Christians too, just like you. We do ministry not because we are pastors, but because we are Christians just like everyone else. Amen? But our primary work is to empower you. It's not only our job to lead people to Christ. You can lead, every one of you can lead people to Jesus. It's not our job just to pray for the sick. Every one of you can pray for sick people. Whatever needs people out there have, as ordinary believers, every one of you, you don't have to bring them to a pastor. You are a priest before God, anointed by the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It lives inside of you too. Amen? Doesn't matter if you're a young Christian, you don't have an inferior baby Holy Spirit in you. It's the same Holy Spirit that is in your pastor, in Jesus, that also resides in you. And God wants to use you to serve. That's why that volunteer today, it's a spirit of serving. People do, that do that become strong in the Lord. Amen? It's not just for people who are called in the ministry. It, it, whether you are a CEO, whether you are a business executive, all of us are called to serve. Of course, serving is not confined only inside the church, but you can serve God even outside the church by becoming salt and light. Now, in uh, the key, it's not only, it's not only uh, that, that uh, we all serve to become strong, but here's another thing that's important. It's not just a few that serve, but the goal is, a healthy church is, everyone serves. From Him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part, can you say that with me? Each part. As each part does its work. Sorry, that, word, that red circle is supposed to be in the each part <laughs> circle. But as each part does its work. So guys, sometimes we are happy that we have a few pastors that are really good. But you know the real key to a healthy church? It's everyone is good. Including all the members. Amen? Every one of you, especially, I've, I've said this before, I'll say it again, especially you fathers. You fathers, you maybe some of you do not understand fully and comprehend the sanctity of your role simply as a father. As a father, you are a priest of your home whether you like it or not. There is a special anointing that God has placed in your life. Your power, your prayer, it could be the simplest prayer, but when you pray for your, prop, for your family whether those are for financial needs, for protection for your children, troubled kids in your home, when you pray for them, it's as if God had no choice but to answer your prayer. Because that is your God-ordained role. You are a gatekeeper of your family. All you need to do is ask God for it. Lord, protect my child is going to a camp. Lord, it's my kid's examination. Would you give them b blessing? Will you give, would you give them grace? There is, it's very powerful when fathers pray. For their family. When your child is sick, good, you can bring them to church and Pastor Richie, Pastor Romel, Pastor Jerry could pray for them. But there is nothing like a prayer that comes from the Father. It is a very powerful thing. You see, it's not just us doing the job. It's you too. It's every one of us. Amen? So this is our heart. The key is that each part is mobilized. And that is why I, I said from the beginning, I believe this is really God's heart. He wants to honor His whole church. And uh, by the way, when it says, you know, one of the analogies of the church is that it's a human body, right? Jesus is the head of the church. 
We are the body of Christ. That's the picture of the church. You know what most uh, church looks like today, spiritually? Imagine your whole body, it may be complete, no part is missing, but if only half of it's working, here's how it looks like, you know? No offense if you, if you know somebody that have had stroke, but that's what happened. That's the picture. The rest is just being dragged. But when it, every part is functioning, it is considered very healthy. And this is our passion. As your leaders, we are here to help you become all that God wanted you to be. Not just so you could attend church. We're happy that you come to church. We're happy that you worship with us. We're happy that you even give to the offering. But you know what? We're not going to stop there. We want you to become better fathers, better moms. We want you to become better managers, better supervisors, better employees. Amen? Better students. We want you to be the very best that God called you to be. Because that is what the essence and the heart of discipleship is. And also at the heart of empowerment is not only serving so we become strong, it's not only mobilizing the whole church, but it is also building multi-generationally. You know what multi-generational building is? We are not just thinking about our generation. We are thinking about our little children. We are thinking about the teenagers. Sometimes the teenager world, they are lab labeled as re rebellious. We don't believe that. We don't believe that at all. There are seasons, of course, that there are changes in their lives. My kids went through from 13 to... My daughter is 18 years old. My son is 16 years old. They are, without me pressuring them, I never told them once, you better act up because your dad's a pastor or you bring shame to me. Never once I've ever said that. All I did was model what a Christian life is, inspire them, taught them the Word of God, and today they just love Jesus with all of their hearts. We have to value them. Amen? God can use them just as God can use us. The kids, that's why we value, we put so much investment on our kids' church. One day you will have your own land, your own building. And let me tell you, one of the most beautiful part of that building, our kids' church. Why? Not just so we look good, but because we value our children. We want them growing up, no, uh, go, growing up, love God, loving the presence of God, loving the fellowship, amen, loving people. That's really our passion. And uh, let me just share with you 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, to just to validate that. It says, this is Paul speaking to Timothy. Paul, the apostle, speaking to Timothy, his spiritual son in the Lord. He said, and the things that you, speaking to Timoth Timothy, second generation, have heard me, the apostle Paul, referring to the first generation, have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, in trust to reliable men, third generation, who will also be qualified to teach others, fourth generation. What is that? Building multi-generationally. Mga kapatid, if you have gotten saved today, maybe through an effort of a friend, somebody, somebody somehow God used them for you to come to know Christ, don't it, let it stop at you. Now it's your responsibility. Who am I going to win for Jesus? My friend, my compare, my neighbor, my comadre, my classmate before, my office mate, even your enemies. You, let me tell you, you impact one life. You impact an entire generation of people. Every person is so influential. Do you know that even the least of us, this is a sociological fact, na even, sabi na natin, walang education, katulong lang yan, napakahirap lang yan, even that person will influence at least 10,000 people in their entire lifetime. That's why the Apostle Paul, I can understand, every time he writes his epistle, he would say, I thank God every time I remember your faith. Because of your faith today, you might even be struggling in your faith today. Never underestimate your faith. Because of your faith, because of one person's faith, that person will become a mom or a dad one day. That person one day will become a grandma or a grandma. Because of your faith, your descendants, all your children's children will all become believers because of your faith today. So when we talk about faith, we're not just talking about you and your salvation. Guys, we're talking about impacting future generations. Never, ever, ever give up on your faith. Amen? Even though you may be work in progress, God's not giving up on you. As long as you breath, there is hope. Amen? There is grace. Empowerment also brings exponential growth. From Paul's first generation to second, uh, witnesses to Timothy, third generation, that's reliable men, 
to others, fourth generation, and it will continue to expand. Now, we are not just about numbers. We are not here because we are egotistic, that somehow we're insecure if we're small. But every one of these represents a life. And these lives, again, impact other people's lives. This is why we're not just about numbers. We want to make a difference. And empowerment, once you empower, it's passed on through generations. Take a look at this simple diagram of a person, maybe an ordinary person, but because of empowerment, here's what happens. He leads, impacts two people. Those two people he trains to impact also other people. Other people impacts other people. That's fourth generation. Just imagine the implication. And every one of these people in the white can all potentially become like this. And we can make more diagrams. That is not addition. That is not multiplication. That's exponential growth. That is just really impacting. And Jesus said, I do not wish any should perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Now look at, in contrast, a person who may be a super Christian, who may be super anointed, but does not have a concept of empowerment. This is what he does. He just, even if he leads one person to the Lord every month, you know what? They will never grow as much. You know why? He never trains others to do exactly what he has done. Whereas on this note side, if one gets to every three months, you know how much that is in three years? That's over 4,000. And even if you cut that in half, that's still 2,000. Even if you cut it another half, a fourth of it only, that's still over 1,000 people. You impact just because of one life. Whereas this super Christian who is non, non-empowering, only in three years, 36 people, and only very few can do it. In our ministry, we want every one of you to have the opportunity to, to touch second, third, fourth generation of people to God. Power of imp- here Again, if we follow the biblical pattern of discipleship and empower every believer to minister, we will multiply ministers and many number of people will be ministered to. Dr. Stephen Covey, a prolific author, uh, and has written many, many wonderful books, said this, Give a man a fish, and you feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. In this church, we do not want to develop dependency. We do not want to feel good that people look to us, and they really rely to us for spiritual wisdom and powerful teaching. No. We want you to teach you to learn to study the Bible for yourself. We want you to draw from God. We want you to grow on your own spiritually. Amen? Now, of course, we, we, we all have growing opportunities, whether we learn, from one another, we learn from ourselves or we learn from one another, but we want to teach people to fish, not just to wait to be given a fish. Okay? Now, because the context of our discipleship is done in small groups, let me explain to you that might be for some of you a mystery. Bakit ba tong victory gusto talaga ng small groups? Let me explain to you why that is such a critical, non-negotiable element in our church. Okay? Let me give you a backdrop here because from Exodus, before I read this verse to you, let me give you the backdrop. Moses was used by God to lead Israel out of Egypt. So this is Exodus. They now come out of Egypt. He led more than a million people. Now listen carefully. How many of you know Moses was only one man? And you know, every time there's a problem, he, he is in the presence of God in the tent. They come to him, they line up. Just imagine one man with, just let's say that day alone, 20,000 people showed up with some problems. Forget 20,000, just 5,000 people. Now how many of you know by the time somebody get, at the end of the line will get his time, he would have been worn out. And Moses would have been so wiped out as well, right? It was not a good thing. So when Moses' father-in-law, a priest from Midian, saw what he was doing, he gave him this advice. Moses, basically what he's saying, what you do is not good. So here's my recommendation. Select capable men from all the people, men who fear God. So there is some degree of spiritual qualification. Trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain. They are not there for what's in it for them or what they can get. Appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. 
I call this empowering leaders at all levels. For our victory context, leaders of thousands could be our senior pastor. Leaders of hundreds could be a lead pastor or a leader of a congregation or a service. Leaders of 50 should be our discipleship coaches. A discipleship coach is a small group leader that oversees five other small group leaders. And leaders of 10 would be a small group leader. That's why we have small groups. Do you, you get the point? Now let me show you. In most structure, church or corporate world, the, the structure would be like this. It's a top-down structure where the boss and the middle management would be around this area and the rest of the employees are down here. Now what did Jesus have to say about that? Because churches would like to seem to copy the structure of the world. But Jesus said something interesting to his disciples. He said, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. He said, But not so with you. You are not to copy this model. Instead, Jesus said, Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. So what Jesus is saying, this is Gentile or pagan form of leadership. It's top down. They boss around. Okay? We're not critical about corporate structures because there is still, even in the corporate world, they still espouse servant leadership. Okay? So how do you now... So here's what most people did. They respond by doing exactly the opposite, which is probably not the most ideal situation also. We call this the Moses Syndrome. So now, the leaders are down here, and the members are here. Now, if the church is small, or the organization is small, maybe that's manageable. But when this thing grows bigger and bigger, guess what? The people here are going to die. And people are frustrated, right? Because, so let, let me see what Jesus had to say, uh, what, what Jethro had to say about that. Exodus 18, 7 into 18 says, Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing, speaking to Moses, what you are doing, Moses, is not good. Can you say that with me? Not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. And this is why he gave this advice in the next verse. Okay? That's Exodus 18. This is his advice. Select capable men. So what he's saying, you raise leaders at all levels. Not just small group leaders, not just pastors, not just CEOs, not just corporate leaders, but leaders at all levels. That's his advice. So, now, so here's my question to you. How then can we reconcile the dilemma that on the one hand, Jesus wants leaders to be servants, they have to be at the bottom, but at the same time, how do you do that and not get overwhelmed? This is the ideal church setup. Many of you are not aware, but this is the setup of this church. Let me explain to you. It starts out small. The members are here. The leaders, to be consistent with Jesus teaching that leaders are servants, they are still here. Now let's just take a look. The church keeps growing. The church keeps growing, but the secret, that's the members, the leaders are down here. But the way the leaders do not get overwhelmed is we expand the base of leadership by raising leaders at all levels. We expand. The only way to do that is to have an empowering mindset. You cannot be an insecure leader and just keep leadership to yourself. You have to empower others to become leaders also. You get the point? So our bare minimum unit of leadership is units of tens. Because that was the smallest recommendation of Jethro, leaders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. So if our church is 1,000 members, how many small group leaders do we need to have at least? Very simple. We need to have 100 leaders so that the pastor do not get overwhelmed. Everybody's carrying the weight. Everybody's taken care of. They are not lost in the crowd because this is the problem. Once you have a church of 5,000 and 10,000, it's almost like a conference. You don't even know where people are. But if you have units of stands, 
everyone is taken care of. It doesn't matter if the church becomes a mega church. Everyone has pastoral care. They have a group they can open up to because they are part of units of tens. That is why small groups to us is so valuable. And here's the result if we do this. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this, and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain. That means your pastors will not grow very old quickly. They're still happy. They will still have a life. And all these people will go home satisfied. The members are also very happy. Amen? Alam niya sa Manila, 111 services. In one church alone, we would have 14 services on any given weekend. Just imagine, most of our churches in Manila, you know the services? 8, 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8. Ganun ang services. Punong puno. And do you know why? And do you know what? Nobody's burning out. Nobody's being wiped out. Despite the growth, despite the numbers of the members, most pastors only go to two. Why do they only go to two? They should be there the whole day. Because we raise up so many leaders. The worship team, can you imagine? They will sing seven times on Sunday. They'll die by the time. So they only go to one or two. Why? There are so many music groups that have been raised because of empowerment. Volunteers lahat to, hindi to hard. Kahit na may sweldo pa yan, full time pa yan, you cannot just let them do that for the whole day. They also have a family. They will eat, go out with their family, you know what I mean? So that is why we are like this. Even though we are growing, Relax lahat. People go home satisfied. No one's burning out. This is, this is why this is ideal. Jesus himself is the best example for this. He delegated this authority to his disciples. Matthew 28, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. He empowered them. He didn't do it alone. He empowered those people. He's fully aware of their weaknesses. He is fully aware of how... how you know, problematic they could get sometimes, but He trusted them. And we need to do the same thing. We need to trust the Holy Spirit in people. Jesus gave the disciples power to do what He asked through the Holy what He asked through the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. What the Lord also saying is, guys, by the way, yes, I did tell you to go make disciples. I didn't do it through your own ability. Do not go until you are clothed with power from on high. When the Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power to become my witnesses. That is what he said. And in another verse, in Luke 9, uh, it says, When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them what? Power and authority. The power is not in your title. The power is in the Word of God. And the authority is by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So that we don't abuse that. Nobody should come to you. You better listen to me. I'm the small group leader. The authority is in the Word of God. We have no authority over people. The authority is only in God's Word. Amen? That's why we have to preach the Word of God with authority. In Acts 4.13, just imagine, the reputation of Jesus' uh, followers were not really impressive. In fact, in Acts 4.13, it says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. So guys, you may not have the best academic credentials, but if you've been with Jesus, you are empowered and you can make a difference. And in another verse, this is what it says in Acts 17, 6. These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. So they are unschooled, ordinary men, yet they turned the world upside down all because they have, these men had been with Jesus. They have been disciples. They have been empowered by Jesus to make a difference. Lest, just two more slides before I end. Lest any of you still rationalize in your mind, well, nice preaching, but I don't know if that applies to me. I have nothing. I'm not eloquent. I don't know if I can even be used by God. Well, let's read this verse. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealth, wealthy when God called you. In other words, the majority of us are not wealthy, not powerful, not eloquent, not gifted. Instead, verse 27, God chose things 
the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. He chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. In short, God uses the foolish things of this world, the weak things of this world, to shame the strong. So if you're now thinking in your mind, I don't know if I'm ever even qualified, then I'm telling you now, you are the best candidate for God to use. Amen? Now let me just close. One more slide. We'll close with this. Every person, as this is now the application for this sharing. Every person in the church can fall into one of these four types of people. Every one of us here, even though you are just a visitor, you can fall in any one of these. I want you to seriously ask yourself, where am I in here? Okay? First one, just to make it convenient, I call it A, B, C, D. A is acquaintance. That means a friend, a visitor, just somebody that was invited over to come to church. Secondly, is a believer. Or already going, but not really express membership. Just coming. Going, coming and going, an attendee. The third one is a church member who has really expressed, this is home to me, this is my church. But then there's a fourth one called a disciple. A red hot disciple. Let's make the distinction. An acquaintance asked the question, who is God? He's an inquirer. That's why there's a question mark. He could be, he could not be a Christian. But there is an inquiry in his heart. That's why he goes to church. Because maybe he, have, he had friends who, who are believers and he have seen their lives that are quite different. And he's just curious. So he comes. He, uh, he's inquiring who is God. Who is great, his greatest need, therefore, is salvation. That's the greatest need. Ha have an encounter with Jesus, the living God. To have a revelation of who God is and what He has done for them. So, how do, what do we do with this person? Okay, what do we do with this person? We engage this person. Are you getting this now? In that, in that four banners, the first one is engage. How do we engage this person? Through your personal testimony, your small groups, one-to-one, -one, outreach events, or through the worship service bringing them here. Okay? They could Many of you have come to know Christ because somebody invited you here. So, because they pray to receive the Lord, they become a believer. Now, what does the believer ask? What can God do for me? It's a little still self-centered. But now at least he's asking, what can God do for me? What's in it for me? If I become a believer, what advantage will it do for me? What is his greatest need? Obviously, he really needs some rooting. He needs foundation in his life. So what do we do with a person like this? What's the second E here? Exactly. We engage, establish the person. First one there is in that banner is engaged. The second one is established. We establish them in the what? We establish in the faith, in prayer, in the word, in the church. We walk them through purple book. We let them go through experiencing victory, discovering victory, small group, worship service. This is where people experience breakthrough and finally understand church and make a commitment to become a church member. So now that he's a church member, what question does he ask? What does God expect of me? It's a little bit different now. So what is his greatest need, do you think? Can anybody guess? His greatest need is to grow. To grow because uh, he, he needs to understand God's purpose and how God wants to use him. How do we do that? We equip the third E and the fourth E. We equip and empower him. Through what? Victor training for victory, biblical foundations, making disciples class, leadership groups. Once he gets through all that, he becomes a red-hot disciple on fire for God. So what does a disciple ask? What can I do for God? Lord, here am I. Use me. What can I do for you, Lord? So, what is his greatest need? Not to grow anymore, but to serve. To serve others. So what do we do with, what do we do with a person like this? This one is equip and empower him. This time, we, he equipped and empower others. Where are you in this table? Are you the one being equipped and empowered right now? Are you the one that's just kind of hanging, tagging along with a friend that's coming to church because 
You like them. They treat you. They treat you nice. Where are you? Or are you the one that is equipping and empowering others? Wherever you may be. This is my prayer for you. As we enter the 16th year of this church, it's time to take on, to move on to the next level of where God wanted you to go. Amen? Let's all just bow our heads as I speak a word of blessing to all of you. Lord, I thank you for the lives of every person that is in this room. Lord, some of them are really, really deeply walking with you. Some, their hearts are just really tender towards you, Lord. Many of them are asking, Lord, what is your plan and purpose for my life? Lord, I thank you that many of them are now coming here. In, Lord, to express worship, to express love for you. I pray, Lord, you take them to the next step. Lord, I pray that their lives will be fully maximized. Lord, we are aware that Satan come to kill, steal, and destroy. We don't want the enemy to short-circuit the awesome purpose and plans that you have for their lives. Lord, we pray for the best for every one of them. I just pray your blessing on every Christian that is in this room. I pray a blessing over every marriage, every family, including all their children. Lord, if there are just brokenness, may you bring healing and restoration. And Lord God, wholeness into relationships. Lord God, as we enter into the year, the, the, year, the 16th year of the, of the history of this church, may Lord, it will be filled with so much favor. Lord, may you bless the works of their hands that whatever they put their hands, it will be blessed and it will be prospered by the Lord. Lord, may you order their steps. May you protect them from the evil one. May you prosper their lives. May you prosper their marriage. May you prosper their careers. May you prosper their children. May you, may you Lord God, the favor of God be upon them. I pray for increase, Lord God, in this as they enter into this year. Lord, I also prophesy that this will be a year of fruitfulness where there has been so much work and labor and have not seen breakthroughs. I pray, Lord, that this will be a year of breakthrough for every one of them. So, Lord, I just pray your blessing. I commend them into your grace that your goodness, Lord God, your mercy will follow them all the days of their lives. I commend them into your grace. I bless them in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone say a big, big amen. Give the Lord a big hand. I request everyone to please rise and celebrate the faithfulness of God. 15 years of honoring God and making disciples. And still coming. Are you excited, church? Yeah, come on. Put your hands together. Whoa. Give you praise. 
glory for your faithfulness, for your grace and abound, for your love. And this is the day that you have made. We just rejoice and be glad in it. We worship you. We give you praise. Come on, let's declare this church. This is the day you made, so I will give you praise. Whatever comes my way, I rejoice in you. This is the day you made, so I will give you praise. Whatever comes my way, I rejoice in you. This is the day you made, so I will give you praise. Whatever comes my way, I rejoice in you. This is the day you pray, so I will give you praise. Whatever comes my way, I rejoice in you. Whoa. that before we close in prayer uh, we just want to honor a few people today uh, first and foremost uh, we just want to honor Pastor Richie and Raya uh, in behalf of the leadership of the church uh, we just want to thank you grabe na yung leadership nila yung leader by example talaga for us and not only that we just want to honor also yung mga victory group leaders natin if you are life group leaders can you please raise your hand Please raise your hand if you are a victory group leader, a small group leader. All right. You know what? We're not the own field, but you are there in your own field making a difference. And this church is a church not because of us, but because of Jesus in your life. So we just want to honor you for really doing your part. Uh, you mga company owners, you mga in doing their part also to, to make a difference their employees, yung mga officials natin in the military, in the PNP for making a difference in their own turf. Thank you so much for doing that. You are raising the banner of Christ. Thank you so much. Uh, now We're so excited. Uh, we've been talking with Pastor Richie that we're so excited for the next 15 years what God can do. And there's no telling how God can use this church to make an impact not just in the city but even the whole Mindanao. All right, are you in faith for that? Thank you so much. And can we just close in prayer? And maybe one celebration song? Okay lang ba? Oh, one celebration song? Oh. <laughs> anyway, the Lord, thank you so much, God, for today. Thank you so much for the word was shared, Lord. Thank you so much that that, that word will sink deep in our heart. That we will apply it, Lord, not just in the four corners of this building, but we will apply it outside and making a difference, Lord God, to people. Lord, I pray and thank you for your love for us that your love isn't dying, that you love and care for each, uh, every one of us and for this city. Lord, thank you so much for 15 years of really you know, helping us in making disciples and making a difference regarding this city. Lord, thank you so much, Lord God, for raising more leaders, more disciples, or more uh, uh, small group leaders in the campus, Lord God, our campus missionaries, Lord, we want to honor them. Lord, the youth ministry, Lord God, the, the kids' church, Lord, the leadership of the kids' church, and every volunteer, every ministry present in this room. Lord, thank you so much for their lives. Thank you so much for their family. Lord, bless them, bless them, bless them. Use them mightily. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right.
Thank you so much. See you next Sunday. Happy anniversary.